he's a big boy. He's beefy. He's you know, we did uh, an earlier version. We hadn't seen him yet in Book of Boba Fett. And we, you know, utilized our old Chewy mold and just kind of added a few things based on the comic version. But then little did we know he was going to make his on-screen appearance in Book of Boba Fett. And when he did, as soon as we saw that, we're like, ah, oh, we got to do this guy. I just love looking at him. He's, he's, got, such <laughs> a he's got such a presence on him. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and no, I did not put that clip as the intro as a kind of gotcha moment. Oh, so they did take a Chewbacca and put a new head on him with some gear. <laughs> we knew that from the start, as soon as we saw the figure. And now we're getting both. And I know this isn't a popular opinion, but I still stand by my belief that the first Kersantan is perfectly fine as a comic book version. Now he'll live his life out next to Dr. Aphra and the droids, while the new Kersantan gets over on the Book of Boba Fett shelf. Everybody's happy! Or was this my clever way to talk about some Star Wars this week? Because there's nothing new on that front. Maybe? And I'm gonna slip some in at the end too. But first, Let's talk about a couple of Kyoto solicitations, starting with the amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia Kirishima. This has had a slow rollout the past couple of months. It was in January that they announced it with their usual little graphic, and then the figure appeared at Winter Festival in February. Now in May? Is it already May? grief. Now in May, we get the official solicitation. Now initially I thought it would be the base figure, swappable arms to show off his quirk, Maybe a couple of word balloons. Ah, ah. But then the show appearance <laughs> proved that there's more going on there. And now that we have pretty promotional pictures, <sighs> there is a lot more going on. There is, in fact, a full-on interchangeable torso. Top half, bottom half, and then each of those halves are split into halves themselves, I guess, to go over the internal workings of the figure itself. Or maybe there's a joint that you do, and then you put it together, and then you pop it on. I don't know, I don't have a figure in hand. All I got is these pictures. Not only that, the unbreakable arms also have open hands, they have fists, and then two face plates for different expressions. Add in alternate eye inserts to have them looking in different directions, and there is all kinds of possibilities here. That's on top of the pose abilities, because this is Revel Tech you know it's gonna get into some crazy poses. But like we've seen with the last few Amazing Yamaguchi releases, if you order directly from the Kyoto store, there's a bonus hair headdress piece that's battle damaged. And every time this comes up, there's always questions of, well, does the Kyoto store ship to the States? I don't know, I've never tried, but the link is in the description, both to the exclusive and the regular release, so you be the guinea pig and come back and tell me. $80 should release sometime in November. Also from Kyoto, here is the Revel Tech Nightmare Before Christmas Jack Skellington version 1.5. If it looks familiar, yes. This is a reissue of a reissue of a reissue of a figure that came out in 2010. If my research is correct, which was essentially going back to my notes from 2021 when they released the glow-in-the-dark version of this figure. Back then I said this. My wife collects Nightmare Before Christmas figures, so this may be my chance to finally jump on this figure. I've looked at it before, but with the glow-in-the-dark is tempting and then just as an action figure, the options for the face, the hands, the base, yeah, it, it looks neat. But I didn't actually grab it, which is a good thing because with this version, it comes with all of that except for the glow in the dark parts, but they've added more Nightmare Before Christmas bits and bobs. There's now seven heads. I believe three are brand new, along with Floaty Ghosts and Zero's Grave. That's just enough for me to honestly, truthfully cross my heart, hope to die, put it in a shopping cart, and wait patiently for October because when else would a figure like this release but October? For price, again, going back to past Robo, I said this. Looking back at the previous releases, it seems that in 2010, this was $23. In 2015, it was 40. Now it's 60. Oh, toy prices just... And that's no different now. This new one has an MSRP of 70, $75, somewhere in there, depending on the exchange rate any given day. And is it weird that I've now been doing this long enough to refer back to myself several years ago 
and yet the presentation hasn't really changed. Hmm, is it time to do some sprucing, change things up? Let me know down in the comments. And that's not me begging for engagement. Give me a like and a follow. Smash that subscribe button. I am honestly curious because it kind of threw me that I went back several years and same background, same pictures, same hat. I don't know. Do I need to wear a suit? Shave? Buy a different hat? Different colors? Something. I don't know. Next, we're going to jump into McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse because there's a new Batman! I know it's a running joke at this point. Ah! Another Batman in DC Multiverse! What a surprise! Oh my god. But like we've talked about several times before, can you fault a company for wanting to make money? Because we're talking about Todd here. If Batman wasn't selling, do you think he'd be making them? Hell no. And this kind of stuff, even with the Sinestro Corps Batman being Target exclusive, is a building block to get other characters. You know how it goes. Sell, 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 and then we'll slip other characters in. And a lot of us are here for those other characters. But I will admit, <laughs> the yellows, the blacks, the base body used for this Batman, it looks pretty good. It's visually interesting. It looks like a fun figure. And speaking of fun reuse, here is the... <sighs> McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse McFarlane Toy Store Exclusive Gold Label Unchained Armor Superman Patina Edition. <sighs> but this may just be my favorite version of this design. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of the original with the saturated reds and blues, a more traditional Superman color scheme. Then there was the Energized version, which kind of just came off as mustard and ketchup accents. This though, this is a bit more stripped down, more rugged. It's got the bare metal base with some reds thrown in, but then it has a silver dry brush all over it to add some wear and tear, like he's seen some stuff. Then again, Ross still just sings to me. That's one of my favorite things in the world, bare metal. And no, I still don't know why Superman needs a suit of armor. I may have looked it up for one of the past releases, but I've forgotten. I just know I dig this aesthetic. $30 because of the fancy packaging and the exclusivity, shipping right now. Okay, you know that I'm not one to give much attention to leaked pictures, especially when it's unannounced product, but this week had more than its fair share, so I thought, why the hell not? Especially when it's a line that I like way more than I thought I would. It kind of came out of the blue. When I got the figures in my hand, I was like, eh, they're not the most articulated in the world, but in a display, it's very retro feeling. It's, it's satisfying. I'm talking about the McFarlane Toys Batman 66 line. It looks like an upcoming wave will have another Batman and Robin. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm kidding. Like I said, Batman sells. Plus, they're the main characters. You want them, or at least variants of them, out on the shelves as much as possible. I don't know how exciting rebreather versions are. Take the base figures, shove that in their mouth, collect the whole set. But... Again, it's Batman and Robin. But you already see the star of the set, right? She's right there, dead center. It's good to see Batgirl in the series because from what we understand, there's a likeness rights issue with the actress from the actual TV show. So here we go with loopholes. Notice that the packaging for Batgirl does not say classic TV series. This is actually based on the comic books, thereby circumventing any legalities involved with the show itself. There's a precedent for this, though. The Batman 66 Two-Face was based on the comic books, or animation, whatever you want to pull from, because he never actually appeared in the original TV series. And if other leaks hold true, besides another basic Batman and Robin coming, which is good because I don't have those for my display. I have a bunch of villains and play sets and Batboat, I don't have Batman and Robin. Again, Evergreen. Need to keep them a-coming. But there's also comic book Lord Deathman, who appeared in the Batman 66 comic books, and Superman, who apparently didn't appear in the comic books, but there's been all red covers in the Batman 66 style. So maybe they're pulling from those. If the leaked list is true. But, in my head... I'm picturing that style of Superman, and it would look pretty sweet in this display. Here's another random picture pulled from the mean toy streets of the internet, showing the Jada Toys Mega Man Series 1 and 2 in their boxes, or at least mock-ups of their boxes. This isn't so much a leak as it is a glimpse 
at the next step in the process. I'm not a big fan of the property, but they look like good toys, and I know a certain Fushcast host that is chomping at the bit to get these into the display, so I'm excited because he's excited. And no, don't pay much attention to Wave 2 being in the same boxes as Wave 1, including the character pictures. Again, they're just mock-ups. Hell, those aren't even real figures. Those are cardboard standees. But you get the idea. They're on their way. To round out the sneaky peeky segment of this weekly, here is what looks like the upcoming Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Arctic Bat. And I say it like that because it could be fake. And I'm realizing that's another reason I don't usually talk about these kind of things because it's the internet. You can fake anything. But the figure featured on this packaging does line up damn close to the Arctic Bats we saw sneak into the background of the snow job pictures earlier this year. And if you can't trust a good snow job, what can you trust? Back then, we could already see they were gonna be awesome, though, decked out in winter blue and some bright white. But the new image just takes it to another level. First, that new head looking all cybernetic killer-like. Ooh, so good. But is it weird that I find myself liking the new chainsaw attachment more than anything else here? Just think about it, a snowy environment. Calm, cool, quiet. Maybe the sound of branches breaking under the weight of ice in the distance. A babbling brook. Suddenly, <laughs> just blood splattered all across the frozen terrain. And then that's followed by more silence and a gentle steam rising up where the blood is seeping into the cool dirt. I may have built this figure up way too much at this point. I just really, really, really like this look and I cannot wait to someday own this. If, if this is real. <sighs> While we're talking Hasbro, here is the new Dungeons & Dragons Golden Archive Dritz Dwarden. I say new, and technically that is true. This is a new version of Dritz based on a different source, but there is some rehashing going on. Reused upper arms, upper legs, and I'm assuming the crotch, knees, elbows, feet, scabbards, and one sword. Admittedly, those are basic elements. Everything at the forefront that just pops into your eyes that's mostly new. That includes lower arms, lower legs, torso, waist overlay, head and hair, hood and cape, the other sword, which is the same blade but the handle's been changed, and then a new effect. Basically, it's a kit car. Unique parts skinned over a repurposed chassis. And if it works, it works, especially to someone like me who has no horse in this race, who has no knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons. It's just a Dritzt figure. I haven't even seen the new movie yet. I just like interesting fantasy characters and creatures. <laughs> and when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons, they seem to be giving me a lot of that. $30 scheduled for August. Sticking with Hasbro, you know that there are Marvel Legends to talk about. It's almost clockwork at this point. Oh, something new Marvel Legends? Must be a Tuesday. Or a Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Monday, the weekend, if there's a show of some kind. I'm just saying, there's been a lot of Marvel Legends lately. And that's not a bad thing. There's a little something for everyone. If you don't like this, <laughs> there's something else right around the corner. True to their word, this week we saw pre-orders for the Avengers 60th Anniversary Hawkeye with Sky Cycle. This had already been revealed during a live stream in the recent past at some point. So we knew the basics, but now there's pretty promotional pictures. There's things to pour over. First off, this makes me happy because this is my Clint. The lighter colors, I was going to go with the no sleeves first, but I forgot the word sleeves. And then I remembered it after coming back. Oh, I have no problem with Hawkeye in darker colors, full sleeves, whatever, but this is my mind's eye Hawkeye. I do wish there was a darker color used up at the forehead to make the H stand out a little more, but then I realize that that's shading. And if they did that, they'd have to shade the scale mail and everything else. So it was either there or there. <laughs> That's an upcoming play day because I like that shade look. This also emphasizes the cloth lower crotch cover and how much it does not match up with the rest of the figure. The blues are pretty close, but the purple, it doesn't match. And then you have the problem of sculpted straps coming from the pecs down to the belt, then below it just being kind of printed on there. It, it doesn't match up. Me, he's going to be sitting on the sky cycle, so it's going to be tucked up and under. <laughs> he's going to be sitting on it. So it's not that big a problem, but I would have liked to seen, like, 
I'm okay with the blue cloth, but overlay that with a couple of plastic rubbery purple straps with those rectangles sculpted onto them. That would have been the best of both worlds. Still some flexibility, still some flop ability, but then it looks better in neutral position. And I know that's more gripping than I usually do, but I still put it on pre-order because this is my version of Hawkeye and I really like the Sky Cycle. A lot of stories that I have in my head with Barton is him riding the Sky Cycle. So yeah, I like this whole presentation. I want both items. Following the formula we've been seeing lately, the boys also sprung something new on us. Here is the Pulse exclusive, Drax the Destroyer and Moon Dragon. And this was a complete surprise, which does not happen often these days. So when it does, it's almost like I'm a kid at Christmas. It adds to the excitement, even if you do have a problem with some of the details. Not everyone's top pick for Moondragon's costume, but at least for me, like Cersei, her green swimsuit look is okay, but it's not the most exciting. I actually like this more than that. This looks more costumey instead of going to the beachy. You know what I mean? I will point out the painted on belt and worse, single jointed elbows on a female. I understand they wanted to use the arms that have the sculpted glove top up here, but the high boots are painted on. I would have much preferred double elbows painted on. I, I well, perfect world. Eventually get the new parts that have sculpted here, double elbows, double knees with sculpted boot tops because we've seen characters that needed those several times here in the past year or so, haven't we? So I get the decision, but man, my hatred of those single elbows at this point, just, I don't care if they're pinned or pinless, whatever, but. <laughs> and no, I don't care that the cleavage stops at the costume line. I didn't even notice until it was pointed out to me. I wanna think it's a factory thing where it may be hard to get out of the mold if it was cut down further in behind that or the thinness that it would put on the front of the costume there something i don't know manufacturing Whee. but really you can't even see it unless you are up and over and trying to look down into it and at that point it's an action figure come on but then there's drax sweet sweet drax not my favorite version of the character i'm more of a slimmer, smarter, Annihilation Drax kind of guy, but this is a close second. And if it's not guns, it's helicopters passing super close to the house. But don't worry, I'd also still take an old school mix of the two where it was this costume, but way less mass. Give me all the Draxes. I don't care. I like that this is built on the Caliban Build-A-Figure body. I know some people, and even some appearances, make Drax Hulk-sized, but this is enough of a lumbering brute for my shelf. It really makes me want a classic Adam Warlock, though, and Pip the Troll, and Falavel, and other Guardians, and Infinity Watch, and Versions, Gamora, <laughs> That's the sign of a good figure. You look at it and it makes you want more figures. Marketing! On top of all that though, not a bad deal at $50. I know that's taking into consideration current prices and everything, but really, it's a regular figure, $25, a Build-A-Figure for $25. Or a regular figure for $20, Build-A-Figure for $30. If you don't care for the Moon Dragon, that's $10, and then $40 for Drax, however you want to split it up. Whatever works for you. But to not give us a break at all, the boys also announced that next week will be pre-orders for the Spider-Man animated series VHS, Mary Jane vs. Green Goblin. It never ends. I mean, this isn't for me. I don't care about the cartoons from the 90s, but hey, if you're buying everything, good luck. And then finally, we're gonna finish it off with something Hasbro adjacent. I haven't been talking about Transformers because I just don't care. I've always said that I am a tried and true G1 guy. And even then, it's up to the movie. After that, it kind of just loses me. And that's what Hasbro's been doing a lot of. Beast Wars and later cartoons and G2 and, and some comic books and some live action. And at that point, I just kind of lose interest. But I'm still following the 3-0 MDLX offerings because, ooh, they got some classic goodness to them. They take the G1 designs and modernize them. 
They're very recognizable, but very current at the same time. All without the awkwardness of having to transform. And I know that's a sore spot for some people, but for me, I'm in it for the characters. And that's what MDLX delivers. There's transforming transformers for fans of transforming transformers. There's non-transforming transformers for fans of non-transforming transformers. We can just live in peace and harmony. Have I killed the word transform yet? Where was I? Oh, yeah. Three zero MDLX Starscream was shown this week, and look at this beautiful bastard. If you've ever laid hands upon these figures, you know they are an absolute treat. The mix of metal and plastic, the metric ton of mobility, the paints and the weathering, the colors used, the intricate sculpting and detail, it's all just pure joy. And for Starscream, you can even transfer some parts over to Optimus for that in disguise look. That's kind of neat. It's not all puppies and rainbows though. I will say I don't care for the null rays. I don't know if it's the black color scheme that doesn't really match anything else on the figure or the more thinner railgun look. Or maybe it's a mix of both. They just kind of stand out at me. I do like the blades though. Kind of a physical manifestation of his willingness to stab anyone in the back. On the nose, but more interesting than a pair of pistols or something predictable like that. I don't think this is up for pre-order yet, but should be very, very soon if they're showing all these pictures. And that's all I got for this week. But jumping back to the ZBrush presentation of the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series figures, I did a rundown on that video, and in that, I talked about the Clone Trooper bicep. I said that the elbow went all the way through and plugged into the shoulder, and the bicep was just free-floating. Somebody pointed out that that may be wrong, because during the presentation, they talked about not putting the mushroom heads on the pegs in order to print these up and put them together before actual manufacturing. So in my head, that rod traveled up, but if you look real close, they don't line up. That's when I realized, oh, that rod comes up, there's a head there, and then the shoulder comes down, plugs into the bicep with a smaller, shorter, fatter peg. Super close together, but the bicep swivels, but then the elbow swivels. So on the outside, it'll still act the same. The bicep will be able to free float apart from the lower arm, but it wasn't the setup that I said it was, or at least I guessed it was. Just wanted to go back and kind of correct myself. Plus I got to talk about Star Wars more. Clone Trooper, ha <laughs> ha! Or maybe I'm still wrong, and I'll come back around and do another video sometime next week, or throw it into the next weekly. But until then, I'll catch you on the foosh. Oh, I gotta get this room cleaned up, damn.